Okay, this is Think Tech America finding its way. We're going to talk about standstill in Washington, and we're going to keep on talking about it until it stops standing still. Simple. Okay, uh, Winston Welch joins us, and Stephanie Stahl Dalton join us from various places in the world. Uh, welcome to the show, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, I know we've talked about this before, but it's my metronome theory. It ticks from side to side, and he still can't get his way in Congress. How important is that, Stephanie? Um, can we can he survive without a congressional agenda? Not, we cannot. It cannot be that he doesn't get a breakthrough. And it looks like, from what I'm reading and seeing today, that there are some some uh, blooming, uh, some springtime blooms. I mean, there do seem to be some positions opening up uh, to, to really think hard about what they're doing. And I guess the biggest news is that there are 11 Republicans on board for the infrastructure bill. Now, when it gets right down exactly to the details, like if it's gonna be a tax or not, uh, there, there could be some dross rate there. But things are starting to move around a little bit. And uh, uh, it looks like uh, even Manchin is beginning to rethink um, what he's had, he has stated that he is not uh, adamantly opposed to the uh, also the filibuster. But anyway, uh, as far as S1's concerned, it, it looks like we might get some. some yeah, it didn't, uh, it didn't Manchin say finally that uh... Here's his position. I guess it was on the infrastructure bill. Um, and uh, he hadn't done that before. So this was a, a whole new chapter. I don't know what, do you know what his position was that he expressed the points that he wanted, the demands he was making? Well, as far as I can understand it, he just does not believe in making any major voter changes, any changes in in voter law that are not oh, it's a voter law. law okay yeah. in voter law but mm -hmm. he seems now to be coming around he's made some a list of amendments that's very long and for me very surprising because they they are uh attractive and i have heard some commentators uh support that in other words he wants to um he wants identification for voting but also to be accompanied by an, uh, an additional um piece of ID like a utility bill. So, I mean, it's not unreasonable. And uh, I think that that might be attractive to the um, Republicans. And then he's also um, against gerrymandering. He wants that done away with. He wants 17 days or 15 days um, ahead of voting open completely and continuously for voting. So things things like that is what he's, he's willing to um, to support if those amendments are in in the package, and he also wants the um, state the standards for voting to be across the states. So he's he's actually some some of these are pretty high bars. I mean, having I don't think the Republicans want that kind of uniformity or that imposition of a federal uh, routine upon them. But that's what he Manchin is suggesting that, and I think that that makes sense that it's not different across the states, but the same. That would go a long way to getting some of this straightened out. Well, let me let me be pessimistic and say, suppose he's um, he's an agent for the Republicans here. I mean, uh, could it be that uh, some of his points will not be acceptable to, to them? So Biden winds up negotiating not with one, but two forces three forces, the Democrats, which he's already you know, negotiated with, and Manchin, who's in the middle, he has his demands, and then the Republicans who have more stringent demands. And at the end of the day, we've, we've lost month upon month of delay. Is it's, that a, poss a possible scenario? Yeah, I think Biden's coming back and they're saying that he's, he's gonna look at all of this and see what his options are, but he's not, he's not, going to dismiss going it alone if if he doesn't get enough mm. participation. So, I mean, it sounds like Biden's in the place we expect him to be. And if Manchin 
is now getting a little dissatisfied with the lack of any any support at all that he's you know moving around a little bit on on the uh, filibuster so I, I i think that there might be a few more levers for biden to use than than he has today and and mansion is key of course um to, Did, didn't you say that he had 11 republicans who'd go along with him yeah on, on the uh yeah infrastructure bill but they want they have some demands i mean they're asking to have uh they then they don't want the tax and i don't see and i don't know the 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 financial people don't seem to be too upset by that that somehow we'll pay for it anyway well it's a it's a bait and switch isn't it in other words uh, so okay um we're going to do all that at the last minute um mitch mcconnell says oh yeah great idea but we don't have a way to pay for it because there's no tax provision in there so we have to kill it that way i can just see that happening well, I, I, get, I have some confidence because that Biden's coming off a success now, according to what I'm hearing. So he's coming back strong and ready to maybe think this thing through constructively and for what's in the best interest of, uh, of, the, of the country. And there's a huge popular demand for the infrastructure bill. Oh, sure. Oh. And the press has been doing a good job on showing us where the bridges are falling down. And I mean, to the extent that they've done that, um, it's clear there's a problem. On the other hand, you know there's a lot more bridges that are falling down than the ones they're able to show us. So Winston, uh, you sent around a couple of articles this morning. One of them I took a look at, uh, the New York Times it was, and the other was the New York Magazine, which I couldn't see uh, for the lack of membership. But you know, it was, uh, may I use this term? It was uh, optimistic. It was, it was cautiously optimistic about where Biden was on his way back. He's on his back on his way back right now, I think. And um, I guess part of this is how well he did in Europe, because that has an effect on things. So I guess to ramp up to my big question is, you know, how well is he doing in Congress? Is how well did he do, do in Europe? Well, it's not. It's not just that Biden's on his way back, literally from America. America is on its way back america is back and that was the message that he was giving in europe it was just saying a sane adult is back in charge our institutions are getting a cleaning we're uh, going through and we talked about you talked about infrastructure and bridges crumbling this is the the crumbling infrastructure of our moral ethical institutional educational um might i say even spiritual sort of infrastructure of our nation economic infrastructure you you name it and and now we have a person in office who is committed to uh saying you know uh yeah we we tried whatever we just have been trying and that was a disaster and we're back the, the europeans said it almost point blank just it's so nice to have a sane rational person to deal with even if it they would be happy with George Bush or, or any reasonable Republican. No, no, the, but, the Times article that you sent also included a, a comment to the effect that, uh, you know, was, there was some flies in that ointment. Um, uh, and although, was, although they liked seeing that Trump was no longer there, uh, they had a little concern about whether Biden could handle it. Well, you know, the thing is, is, is Joe Biden is, he's a steady Eddie. He's not uh, this glamorous, boisterous uh, fellow who charges into the room. He's not a Donald who just obsesses everything and everybody's like, well, what's going to go on next? He's, he's just a, a good person who is stable and sane, and they don't get all of the attention. You know, I, I, I guess you could liken him to um, you know, Angela Merkel, a stable, sane uh, individual who's promoting fundamental rule of law and liberal democracy at the end of the day. And so when he went to meet with uh, Putin, there was no name calling and there was no harassment. They said there was no personal acrimony. And basically all he said was, yeah, we really don't like our, uh, our infrastructure being messed with. And I suppose you wouldn't like yours being messed with either. It was just sort of a very gentle reminder that America also has uh, uh, you know, uh, abilities. But I think he was, uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, Putin comes across as very cocky and confident and, you know, he was enabled and coddled or coddling, depending on how you look at it for the last four years. Um, 
And I think now that Joe Biden is there and he w went to NATO and, you know, he's saying we're back to the old NATO. It's, it, what I thought was interesting was was him adding in the China mix to everything. That was actually um, something that I'm not sure that I would have pressed with NATO right now. I would have just reinforced NATO for being NATO and they're pulling out of a uh, out of Afghanistan. But you think he had to he had to make some statement about why China was not there. Um, and that where China fits in the world order. Because, well, uh, this is the G. I mean, they kicked out Russia a few years ago. So it's the G7. Ch should China be there? Arguably, well, China's and the, the, these other ones they go into. But the G7 could really be, you know, renamed, um, you know, America and its. Uh, and Western, Western Europe. In Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Canada, of course. Uh, let's not forget Canada. But I think. His main message was this, uh, and I, I don't know which article you're referring to. Was that in the Intelligencer um, from or uh, no, the How He's Doing article? Uh, you know, there was another one that, that I thought was um, was also it was also good. You know, and and it, this this idea that he, that he's failed or that it's over, he has many levers and switches at his command, and the fact that that uh, well, as Stephanie was saying, there's even 10 people that are looking at crossing over this is a news like that is incredible we didn't hear that for the last four years that that's where the victories are coming the victories are coming where people can sit down with their families and friends and co-workers at a picnic a post-covid picnic and maybe get along and maybe just try and not mention um the last four years because we have someone who's just sort of he, he like I said, we need to bake and baking soda poured over everything, and he's baking soda. But baking soda has a hell of a lot of uses. If you haven't looked it up, look it up on the internet. And Joe Biden is a good soothing baking soda for the country. At the same time, he is slowly and steadily working his way through many um, areas of government that we don't really see, and that but that in the end are. Uh, are going to be very consequential. Whether well, he gets not to be the gadfly on this, but you know, there is those who are saying he's running out of time. And that's the question before the, the House today. I mean, we keep hearing these uh, suggestions that, you know, he's doing the right thing and it's, uh, he's a very decent guy and he has the right, the right uh, sensibilities. But the fact is that none of his programs have gotten through Congress. Uh, that's the reality. That's the bottom line. Well, and there has. are a lot of op-ed pieces to the proposition that he doesn't have an indefinite period of time to, to bring his agenda forward. He's going to lose credibility and soon. What's your answer? No one has an, an infinite amount of time. Uh, absolutely. Does he need to get some wins out of there? Yes. But as Stephanie was pointing out, you have a couple people who are, are able to thwart his... Um, anything any agenda that he has and so he he's a he's a savvy politician he didn't stay in congress for for 40 years before this and become uh you know uh vice president without uh learning a thing or two so i think as we go through and and as joe manchin is able to say you know what i really love this idea of bipartisanship and i thought the olden days were there but they're not and gives gives that a chance to fail as one of these articles suggest, but fail fairly. So actually give it a fair chance for bipartisanship. Uh, bipartisanship What's a uh, fair maybe. chance? Uh, July, August, a September? A fair chance Next is January. Joe Manchin decides it's a fair chance. So the sooner they can press that, the better. So it's a good faith effort, and you hope that people will sign on. And actually, it gives Republicans some space to reclaim Republic, real, uh, you know, olden days. Is there any sign Republican. of that? Uh, yeah, there's a sign of that, and just the fact that, well, like Stephanie was saying, he's there's there's talking going on and actually being reported about. It's like uh, a, it's a breath of fresh air where it's going. I don't know, maybe they're still breathing stale air, but at least they're breathing, and uh, it's somewhat fresh. It's new. It's 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 something we haven't seen in a while. So he, he does have a period of time, but I think after a while he's going to be able to turn the screws on Joe Manchin and Kirsten's system. Well, I hope play. so. But Stephanie, let, you know, you started this by reporting that 11 people were, you know, going to come around on infrastructure. What 11? Where did that come from? How real is that? Or is that just another distraction? Well, I, I only heard um, from, from one of them. And I think that it does validate what Winston's saying about 
something new. I mean, because it was a second committee meeting that occurred while Biden was gone. And the first one, of course, was marching to, to what McConnell said. So nothing. But now with them having the second meeting, and I, I don't I don't know, you know, how if it's going to be a trickster thing, Jay, like you mentioned before, that at the end, there'll always be something that will pull the string right and unravel it. But for instance, this man, um, his name is uh, he's from Indiana um, and he's a Republican, of course, from Indiana. And he's um, Todd Young. So he's on the list. Now he was being very straightforward in his comments um, and not uh, in any smirky way or trying to be nasty about, or you know, uh, negative on what all anything a Republican, or a Democrat offers. But he was saying that he would not support, and he believed that the group was from the Republican side, that they're not interested in, in paying for this, all right, through the taxes. They don't want more taxes levied on the people. And then even more importantly, I think, for some of the work that, Kamala Harris and the president have been done have done is to um, he wanted to reassign all of the care uh, categories so the health care the child care the elderly programs and so some of the all of that group back to the committees where that kind of uh, work usually stays and and is uh, legislated there so he he was more specific on the kinds of things that that were issues that that they would want some give on that. Now, I think as you are saying with Biden coming back and being a sensible, reasonable person and also being complimented by Putin on having been uh, responsible for a constructive conversation that they had. He he said that in his, his, um, I don't know what the translation issues are, but the word that was used is that Putin did say it was a constructive conversation. So I think that Biden can come back and note, Jay, he's got to know about the pressure of the time. It's such a good point. It can't go on much longer. So you can take a look at what these people are going to give or not give and decide to go with. Because Let me, let me flip it on you for a minute. Okay? Um, all that considered, if you were a Republican mastermind on this, like a McConnell, um, you, would, you would do cherry picking here. You would say, okay, uh, first thing we do is we make we make the Republicans look good in their states because we want to, you know, advance their popularity, um, assure their reelection, what have you. We want to show the Republicans are bringing home some bacon. So we'll do infrastructure and we'll negotiate it so that critical Republican states are getting that infrastructure. Okay, that that works in his favor for sure. Voting does not. Okay, there'll never ever be, in my view. Under this scenario, anyway, there'll never be an approval of any voting bill, not the first one, not the second one, not a chance. OK, then then you have other things like um, gun control. Never, never gun control. That's off the table. Um, what's the other one? Immigration, immigration. Same thing. We're talking about white supremacy here in the South where we're not we're not going to do that ever, 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 ever. So McConnell's earlier admonition that, you know, the Senate was never going to vote for Biden's stuff. Um, you know, that's probably true as to at least some stuff. So let me let me throw the possibility at you. OK, McConnell lets infrastructure pass. He lets it pass without a, a tax solution because he doesn't want to offend the big givers. You know, they need the big givers. And, and indeed, some of the corporations are coming back now. I think Boeing was a good example. Boeing is coming back to make contributions to Republicans. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure why they did that, but they did it. And others probably were in the same ballgame. So, <clears throat> so they don't want, the Republicans do not want to increase the corporate tax, but they want the infrastructure to make Republicans more popular in their states. Okay, and after that, they're back to the same, the same, the same music. We don't want anything that Biden wants. We want to look bad and incompetent and and ineffective. Uh, And we want to maintain the drumbeat um, on voter suppression. What do you think about my scenario? Well, um, I think that there is a McConnell mandate, as you um, say. I I was thinking guiding principle, but actually, no, it's a mandate. But somehow they have stepped a little bit away from that in this second committee meeting. However, that also supports your 
your uh, theory that this might just be another uh, playing the game. So here's what I think we've got is um, Biden coming back. This is an experienced po a politician, um, a service, a public service person who it, it has everything you can possibly have to bring to making a decision on legislation that he must make. And uh, so he's got everything to, to do with it. So we'll come back. He, he'll show us, you know, what his decision is, if it's to go without them, cut them loose and just go with um, getting it through, or if he's going to make any more adjustments and cater more to McConnell. He doesn't have the power to get it through anyway, does he? Well, if he gets 10 of them, if he gives enough to get the 10, the 11 is actually 11. That's, that's infrastructure. On the infrastructure. Now, and then he's got a wavering, a wavering of mansion on the, the, uh, the, the filibuster. So he's still got, I don't know what's the deal with the Arizona woman cinema, but um, I don't know. It seems like she's not that much of a problem. It looks like she might go with the group if, if she goes. So I, I think that that's maybe what Biden will do. I mean, he's nobody can make nobody has more to bring to this decision than he does. And uh, and he understands his legacy issues and he understands his timeline. And he also knows Mitch McConnell. So he knows Mitch McConnell more than anybody else too, having worked with him. And he's a realist about this. He's not under any romantic bro notions about McConnell. And uh, so we'll see what he decides to do. It may be that he's going to go it, go without him. Because well, we'll see, I hope we see soon one way or the other. So, Winston, you know, I, let's get down to the weeds for a minute. OK, we, we talk about what a great guy Biden is and all that. <clears throat> but how is he actually functioning? Do you have an idea? For example, does he have uh, Ron Klain and others out there in the Congress um, talking to Manchin, talking to Republican senators, for example, lobbying them, meeting them in the offices, uh, trying to persuade them to come along and, and join the necessary tent. I mean, <clears throat> it's one thing to be in the papers and to shape a world opinion of you as a great guy, uh, although there hasn't been any remarkable, dramatic, romantic um, kinds of um, you know, uh, uh, successes here. Um, but, uh, you know, it is clear that he's a great guy and he's he shaped himself that way. Bottom line, though, is the voting. I mean, you could have a popular vote. Biden would win, no question. But the voting in the Congress is what counts. There's where the power is. How do you change that recipe? How is he changing that recipe um, beyond just his public image, which may or may not change anybody's mind in the Senate? How does he do that? What's the practical technique? Well, the public image does make a lot. Uh, he's got he's got solid rankings because people were sick of the last four years. They, they're they're happy to have Joe Biden in office for the most part. I mean, if you, you have your your members that aren't, but uh, the article you're referring to in New York Magazine uh, was by Gabriel DiBenedetti. Uh, Biden's stealth strategy for getting big things done, even with the split Senate. That's where he lays out the uh, this this quiet strategy that that he's able to get a lot done more than we realize. Yes, he is sending out people. Yes, there are these overtures being made. He is he's a senator that's now become the president. Uh, he knows how this work gets done and doesn't get done. Donald Trump blustered into town. I mean, you, we, we all remember the shock look on his face when he won the election. Right. Uh, like, oh, my goodness, I don't even. I couldn't even find my hotel in the city. You know, I mean, that's probably what he was thinking. And and that's not what we have here with a, the consummate insider. So, you know, if, I, if you're a Republican been... senator, McConnell has said, you stay away from Biden, um, Klain and all the rest of them. I don't want to I don't want to hear about any meeting. I don't want to hear about any phone calls. I don't want to hear about any interchange of emails. You stay away. I'm telling you, I'm the boss. Uh, how easy it is, is it, for Joe Biden and his people to actually get meetings with these people and try well, to convince I've, I've, them I've and lobby it. them? I've read anecdotally that, that like, for the uh, infrastructure bill, that he's sending around uh, Mayor Pete, who's now uh, the director of the Department of Transportation Security, uh, Transportation Secretary, Department of Transportation Secretary, um, and and basically has been in charge of a lot of this infrastructure stuff. But they said he's very charming. He's meeting with people across the aisle. 
because he is from, you know, he was from Indiana as well. So this is, you know, the heartland of America. Um, yeah, I will refer reader, our viewers to just a couple more articles because it's important they do their own research. But ones I found interesting in, in 538, an article called Why the Two-Party System is Effing Up U.S. Democracy. And effing is called E-F-F-I-N-D. We got um, that. We're, we're old enough another to one, get that. Just in case, just if the masses don't, don't get upset about it. Um, there's another one that came out where uh, we're getting all these leaks now. We got a whole bunch of leaks coming out about what's happened in the last four years. The books haven't come out yet. What about all of the FOIAs that are going to come out? But this last one was in uh, Vanity Fair on how Donald Trump pressured the Department of Justice to investigate that Italian satellites changed Trump votes on Biden once. Um, and then the one that uh, you have asked often, is anything ever going to happen? The Atlantic came out with an article by Ronald uh, Brownstein says how to hold Trump accountable. Um, the extent of the former president's corruption may be too great for Americans to fathom. And he goes in there on different ways of how this is going to happen from citizen journalists uh, and, and and on up to respected people like, uh, we'll say, you know, the Boltons of the world, on up to uh, committees that are uh, that we need to create a truth commissions. And then, of course, the uh, the states doing their own work and Congress maybe stepping in in some fashion as well as other ways. But it's effectively, I, at the end of the day, I don't think anything will happen to Donald Trump beyond financial stuff. But around him, there will be the fallout. So you know, I, Bolton won his lawsuit. Right? You know, Trump tried to stop him on the book and there was litigation. He won that. It's going to all this stuff is going to come out. And I think all of that is going to weigh in in helping Joe Biden and other people just say, this was such a disaster. Now we're finding out that he was spying on journalists, on Democrats, on probably on Mitch, Mitch McConnell. I mean, we, we don't know the extent of this. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, let, me, let me go to Stephanie. All of what's coming out is in the press. And it's by way of, of leaks. It's, it's not necessarily anybody official uh, you know, coming before us. It's they're going to the press. And, and, I, and I really wonder, let me throw up another dark possibility at you. Um, you know, could it be that Joe Biden doesn't want to go after uh, the Department of Justice and Trump's uh, minions right now? That he wants to sort of hold it over their heads, but he doesn't want to have this big investigation um, because it's more valuable in the possibility than it is in the reality. Um, and maybe he thinks that will soften up the members of Congress who, but they did something really gross yesterday. I forget what it was. The Republicans in the Senate, just incredible. Um, <clears throat> they're still doing it, you know. Um, but maybe Biden thinks that if he holds it over their heads and he doesn't actually lower the bar, that's a pun, by the way. <clears throat> he, doesn't, he doesn't come down on them with the commissions and investigations right now. And he probably has a lot to say about that. It's better for him. It's better for him because maybe uh, they will be better negotiating partners in the possibility of getting hurt than if they do get hurt. What do you think? I think that's really interesting. And I think that there's no one better to have that as one of his strategies than, than uh, Biden. Because if you'll recall, they started horsing around with um, his son. Remember, um, Hunter came up a long time ago. And what did Biden do? He just let it ride. And you know, at this point, it's done. I mean, nobody's interested in Hunter Biden anymore, like, as they shouldn't have been from the very first time. Like, you know, he's not running for president, by the way, or anything else. But I, I think that, that that's, you're making me realize through that question that Biden knows quite well how to do that and how to handle that situation. And there are many benefits which he's already received from applying that approach. So, hey, you might be right uh, in his book of plays with that, a major. I think we have to watch this so carefully and, and see where the dots connect us and yeah. see where the strategies are on both sides. Um, and the, yeah, the strengths that these people are showing, we, we're learning more and more about the venality of Mitch McConnell and the horror show that's going to be dropped on us over the coming years about from Trump's real yeah. bad stuff. And now we're learning about strengths too. And I think 
Oh, there are a lot of them in Biden, and this is a good man for this role. Remember, they're still working on Nietzsche. They, I just remembered that the, the thing the Republicans did in, um, in, in the Senate yesterday is they, they refused uh, to give some kind of compensation or award or recognition to the Capitol Police. Yes, the gold. Yeah, yeah, is that is that gross? Is that gross? Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, they're sort of they're still in lockstep in many ways, and um, it's and hopefully it'll 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 break down. So, Winston, how much time? You know, I mean, this could all be a real uh, kabuki. Uh, how much time does he have to get something through? Whether it's infrastructure, voting rights, the filibuster, those three are the likely ones. Um, how much time before before the press comes down on him? And they will. They are starting to do that now. Um, and thus the people. And then that, that uh, you know, um, en enhances uh, McConnell and, and the Republicans and their determination not to give him anything to make him make us all wait to the 2022 elections and then try to regain control of both houses. That's the obvious plan. So at what point is it too late, Winston? Well, it, it was too late 40 years ago when we started dismantling everything in this nation. But you're not answering my question. We're, we're, there is no deadline that I'm going to give you, Jay. Uh, I'm going with slow, steady Eddie. He's making his, he has a playbook. He knows what levers to press. He's uh, exerting pressure where he can. And he's accomplishing things how he can. And right now, I just want to give him some breathing room because I'm kind of enjoying waking up, not not looking at the damage report every by the hour. Yeah, watch uh, out for the future, minutes. though. Watch out for the future. If we have both houses in the hands of Republicans, watch out for that. That's going to be a really, really bad. We had bad surprises here in politics. OK, let's go to the final comments. Um, Stephanie. Um, what are your comments to leave us with in terms of our appreciation of the news, our examination of these and other issues uh, in the next week or so? What's your thought? Well, I, I'm thinking that today has a little bit of a positive wrap on S1, on the, that uh, law that looks like more and more people, more and more of the, the Senate coming around to that. Um, and they are at least expressing their opinion that it makes sense and, and we do need this and uh, it's time to, 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 to uh, sanctify the, the voting rights that people need to have. So anyway, I'm fit for today. What, what's gonna happen uh, when Mitch McConnell comes in to try and get in its way or others, um, we'll see. But right, right now, it looks like it's a positive thing. Well, you know what they say, from your lips to God's ears, that's what they say. And, and Winston, um, do, you, do you agree with Stephanie or do you have more on that? Uh, you know, last comment, last comment. People are kind of calm. We got the Senate unanimously passed the Juneteenth bill, which was stunning to me. Um, and of course, there's that's a real interesting thing. And uh, we also had the, the uh, Supreme Court essentially punt on the uh, on the city of Philadelphia ruling um, about uh, same sex couples and adoption rights. So. We're seeing, uh, and the Supreme Court refused to turn over the Obama, Obama, and they, they refused to return. So I think there's kind of a real sense that people won't admit uh, on the right, especially that they're kind of enjoying some calm and not everything being in chaos every single second. So that's going to play into factors back home in Peoria when those guys go back. They're going to be like, "We're retired of the chaos. You can." be against that or for that but we want you to work together and i think that's what statistics that's what uh, polls prove out and i think that's what we're going to see so i re i am fundamental answer optimistic today on thursday uh june 17th with where we're at right now as we're going forward while we have a lot of work to do a lot a lot a lot of work to do we have the tools we have the people and we have the capabilities to do it it's just the will to carry it out one last question i can't i can't resist asking you this one last question what do we know if anything what do we expect about august about trump's threats of doing something in august i'll ask you both that question uh let's start with you winston he's no i i, I we have so many other things to do that the dot the the, the, the uh, noise meter just needs to be dialed down and the oxygen needs to go out of the room for 
uh, reporting on them anymore. We have enough with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Whatever she says that day should be front page news. I don't care what it is. Good, good answer. Stephanie, you? There seems to be the consensus that that uh, former president is certifiable, that literally certifiably mentally diminished. And so that's what we've got. So what does that mean for August? It's that he will try to do whatever he wants to do. Maybe the same thing again, or maybe someplace else, or maybe in all 50 of them, all 50 of our states, let's run after our Capitol building. And um, it could be that he's going to do that. But mm. I'm going to be more and more of a consensus that people are going to come to understand what this phenomenon is that occupied the White House and begin to see that actually something like that can happen. And we need to we need to change the Department of Justice's regulation that you cannot indict a sitting president. <laughs> so hopefully yeah. the train can kind of go down that that track. Well, um, you know, uh, one I, my reaction to all of this uh, is that um, number one, um, he's running out of gas. He's running out of gas. Uh, number two is that we are in a new time. We are in a new time. We we are discovering a new time, and hopefully, it is a better time. But we, my my last point would be we're still hanging in the balance. Thank you very much, Winston. Thank you, Stephanie. Great to talk to you guys. See you next week. Take care. Aloha.